Okay, so you've just bought an i9-14900K or 14900KF, they are the same CPU, and the performance isn't enough for you. You want more. Well, first of all, please make sure you have enough cooling. Hopefully you will be running a custom loop or have liquid metal or direct die cooling directly on your CPU because those things run hot and your issue is gonna be the temperature. So this guide will not work for you if you don't have temperature headroom. So here we're running a 360 millimeters only one water cooler and it's simply not enough. So you're gonna need a custom loop or a very good 420 mil water cooler, okay? Now, listen to me guys. For most people, if you want more performance, it is better to undervolt this CPU. I have a full video on how to undervolt for performance. This seems tricky, but it's actually very simple. You basically unlock the limits, give it a bit less voltage, and you will get more FPS in game and higher scores in synthetic loads. So I do recommend you do that. If you're saying, no, I don't care, give me the settings. I will give you the settings because nobody on the internet is giving out these settings. But me, I think you guys have the right choice to do the wrong choice and just overclock it hard. So I will tell you the right values and how to overclock it properly for both single threads multi-threads, gaming, work, all of it, okay? So we're using an MSI Z790 Pro uh, Wi-Fi motherboard. Let's go in the BIOS and I will tell you how to do it. But please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if this ends up being helpful, okay? Let's go. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Again, you enter it by pressing delete. And now first thing we wanna do is get everything to default, okay? At this point, we're going to overclocking. And first thing, make sure you have your RAM XMP enabled. There's no point in overclocking your CPU if you don't have your RAM running properly. Now, with this said, we will have two different presets. One for, I, I, I wanna say more balanced for like gaming and other things, and one just for gaming, okay? First one is gonna be the one more balanced and it's gonna be basically an all core overclocking. The second one is gonna be a per core overclocking. The determining stability in the second one is going to be very difficult for you guys, but whatever. Let's get started, okay? So Pico ratio, we want to put 58 here. We are aiming at a 5.8 gigahertz all-core frequency for our CPU, okay? E-core ratio, be prepared, guys. On this one, we want to get a very nice, very sweet, just, just overall stable <laughs> 45, okay? Super high. If you remember, uh, up until 12th gen, we would get this to like 40 max, so it's pretty big increase and now we also want to overclock our cache and we want to put it to basically a static so we want to put the minimum and the maximum to be the same so we want to put 50 on our ring right there now we want to unlock all of our limits on the board okay so cpu cooler tuning if you have this put it to water cooler but then we want to go regardless of the cpu cooler tuning when i go in advanced cpu configuration make sure you disable enhanced turbo this thing is the worst thing you can have on your cpu and now we want to unlock all of our wattage limits okay so wattage to the max temp limit to the max at this point we also want to spend some time tuning our load line calibration okay now that will be in different places depending on the bios in mine it's in digital power load line calibration we want to put it on a very close to flat we want it basically flat. So level three on MSI is gonna be good. As you can see, it's the red line, but generally you want it to be flat or even slightly higher than flat, if it makes sense. Vdroop is good, but we want stability in this case, so we cannot waste too much time, unfortunately. Now we wanna go into CPU core voltage mode and put a nice override. Override is basically the static because offset, depending on the board, it's gonna be called differently. And now this is the only setting you have to really play around with. So I want you guys to start with 1.45, okay? Now this is a high core voltage, okay? But it's what you're gonna need for this CPU to run because at stock, uh, I've seen as high as 1.155 uh, go on single core uh, workloads. And those algorithms are made very nicely. So you do want roughly 1.45, this is gonna eventually degrade your CPU a bit, but it's gonna give you more performance. So, you know, decent trade-off, I guess. In here, in the core voltage, this is not gonna work for everybody, okay? So if you're very lucky, you might get away with 1.4, but you have to be very lucky. Most people are gonna need 1.475. Actually, most people really are gonna need 1.5, but 1.5, as you can see, it's colored in red. It's not a good idea to have it. So I do recommend the maximum for you guys of 1.475. If this doesn't work, you wanna go back and just lower those things a little bit starting from the p cores because these are going to be your main source of instability okay so 57 is actually going to be very good if it's not working don't be greedy don't push 1.5 volt just settle on 57 okay it's smarter trust me guys this is basically it it's actually relatively simple to overclock the cpu 
but you do have to do a lot of stress testing and just make sure your temperatures are in check. I cannot stress this enough. Remember, a CPU that runs hot and with too much voltage is a CPU that's not going to last long. So be sure to test this properly. Let's go to the second part of today's video. Well, first I'm going to tell you something. So you can also just disable your efficiency cores if you want. Does it make sense? Just like you can go in advanced CPU configuration and just go in active P cores, active E cores and just put zero. This will free up a lot of temperature headroom. Just it will improve your CPU, but you will lose performance in like most use cases okay but you can do this if you want to really push the single core higher you can do this you can also then go down and basically increase your ring to like 52 if you're running with no um basically no e cores okay 52 will work but uh, this is if you want to really play around with it i don't recommend it really i recommend you just uh, keep your e cores enabled now if you want to do per core overclocking this will again depend very much on the motherboard. On my motherboard that we have here, we want to go into P-Core ratio apply mode. And now on some motherboards, you will have per core. Here we have turbo ratio. And now what we want to do is basically determine how many P-Cores are going to be here. And then for each one, what the frequency is going to be. So it's actually simple to just copy my settings. So I will show you what I found to be basically working for my PC. But again, you really want to test this one very much okay so this is just with a very good cpu i've been able to do this with the same voltage as we had before okay so we want to do uh, numbers of p core group one we want to do two and then i was able to run here 61 so basically 6.1 gigahertz then i was able to run five cores at six but let's let's do six okay because you, you, you don't really need more than two very high performance cores and i recommend you just put this to 59 and then I was able to basically run eight of the P-Cores, which is basically all of them. And I was able to run this at 57. So basically our initial setting, if that makes sense. So this is like what all of our cores are doing, if it makes sense. So we will have two cores running on 61, six cores running at 59. Um, most people, most of you will actually have issues with this. This is high, but my CPU is good. So if this is unstable, you might want to try this or this. I mean, I, I think you kind of get the gist of this. I can't really make a detailed guide because you really, really, really have to try it. I've seen CPUs that can do like seven cores on 60. So seven cores on six gigahertz, but one core at like 56. So you have to just try this one out and try the various combinations. If you want a rough guide, I recommend this one, 61, 58, 57. If you want it super safe, I recommend actually this 60, 58, 57. This is like super safe and it's going to give you a nice boost in gaming. So I guess this is it for today's guide. You know, I like to be precise and to give direct information, but with this kind of overclocking, which depends on so many factors, you eventually will need to do some tuning on your own. But you can drop a comment and ask me for literally any kind of advice. I try to answer all of them. So I hope it was helpful. I hope you will drop a like and a sub and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.